An emergency is any condition or situation which requires immediate action, right? When we talk about endodontic emergencies, we mean any condition which causes pain or swelling in the oral cavity that requires immediate diagnosis and treatment. The most common causes of endodontic emergencies are pulpal diseases and traumatic injuries to the tooth. If you have ever had a toothache, you know that it's a very agonizing experience, right? You need to rush to your local dentist. It's an emergency that needs to be treated as soon as possible. Now, the pain in endodontic emergencies is associated with chemical mediators and pressure. Chemical mediators cause pain directly by lowering the pain threshold of sensory nerve fibers or by increasing vascular permeability and producing edema. Increased fluid pressure resulting from edema also stimulates the pain receptors. We will be learning about endodontic emergencies in detail in this video. To understand a topic, the first thing we generally do is to look at its definition. According to Grossman, endodontic emergencies are defined as pain or swelling caused by inflammation or infection of the pulp or periradicular tissues necessitating an emergency visit to the dentist for immediate treatment. The key thing to note from this definition is that the pain in an emergency is so severe that it needs immediate treatment. As dental surgeons, it is our duty and responsibility to be knowledgeable about emergencies and be capable of treating them effectively. Endodontic emergencies are broadly classified as occurring before treatment, occurring during treatment and after treatment. Emergencies occurring before treatment are further classified into emergencies presenting with pain or swelling and traumatic injuries. Emergencies presenting with pain or swelling include symptomatic reversible pulpitis, symptomatic irreversible pulpitis, primary symptomatic apical periodontitis, secondary symptomatic apical periodontitis and cellulitis. We have discussed traumatic injuries and pulpal pathology in their respective videos. Do check them out if you have missed them. Endodontic emergencies which occur during treatment are hot tooth and flare-up. A hot tooth basically means a tooth which is difficult to numb using local anesthesia. This phenomenon is most commonly seen in the mandibular first molar. After giving inferior alveolar nerve block, the patient experiences numbness of the tongue and lip, but when attempting access opening, the patient has severe pain. Also, please note that the effectiveness of local anesthesia is reduced when there is inflammation. There is a special class of sodium channels on C fibers in the pulp known as tetrodotoxin-resistant sodium channels. There is a shift in sodium channels from TTX-sensitive to TTX-resistant during inflammatory reactions and the TTX-resistant sodium channels play a role in sensitizing C fibers and creating inflammatory hyperalgesia, which means an increased response in the form of pain. The problem of hot tooth arises because the TTXR sodium channels are five times more resistant to anesthetic than TTX sensitive channels. So how do we numb such teeth? We need to supplement our nerve block. Buccal infiltration with 4% articaine with 1 is to 1 lakh epinephrine has been proven to be very effective in managing a hot tooth. Supplementary intraligamentary injections and intrapulpal injections can also be given. Buffering of the anesthetic has been found to make the onset of anesthesia much quicker in a hot tooth. What is buffering? It means making the anesthesia alkaline. This is done immediately before its administration with a stabilized sodium bicarbonate solution. 
Endodontic flare-up is defined as an acute exacerbation of an asymptomatic pulp or periapical pathosis after the initiation or continuation of root canal treatment. Now why does this happen? When there is an asymptomatic pulp pathosis, what does it mean? It means that the immune response to the infection is good and the infection is controlled. However, it does not mean that the infection is eliminated. Simply put, there is a local adaptation response to the pulp pathology and therefore a balance is maintained between the infection and the host response which limits the spread of the disease. So when endodontic treatment is started, this balance gets disturbed. During endodontic treatment, irritants like microbial byproducts, irrigants and intracanal medications are introduced into the canal system. This may cause a severe inflammatory response and lead to severe pain. Flare-ups are managed by giving non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and paracetamol, long-acting local anesthesia and antibiotics if necessary. Grinding the tooth out of occlusion is also a treatment option. In patients with diabetes, endodontic treatment has lower success rates and they are prone to flare-ups. Antibiotic coverage should be given to patients with poorly controlled or uncontrolled diabetes in emergency cases. For example, if there is presence of oral infection or dentoalveolar surgery, this will reduce the chances for post-operative infections and delayed wound healing. In cases of controlled diabetes, no antibiotic coverage is needed. The emergencies occurring after treatment is complete are post-obturation pain and vertical root fracture. After completion of the root canal treatment, patients usually complain of pain, especially on biting and chewing. This is considered to be normal and it can persist up to 5 days post-obturation. If the pain is severe or persists for longer than 5 days, then the operator should reassess the treatment that is performed. A few causes of post-obturation pain are over-instrumentation, overfilling, missed canals and poor coronal seal. Let's talk about the vertical root fractures now. They are longitudinal fractures that originate in the roots of the teeth and with few exceptions, these fractures occur almost exclusively in endodontically treated teeth. Root anatomy, amount of remaining sound tooth structure, loss of moisture in dentine, amount of bony support, pre-existing cracks and biochemical properties of root dentin are the predisposing etiological factors. Bruxism and excessive load on endodontically treated teeth can also cause vertical root fracture. Roots that are narrower in the mesiodistal dimension are more susceptible to vertical root fractures such as those in maxillary and mandibular premolars, mandibular molars, mandibular incisors and mesiobuccal roots of maxillary molars. The diagnosis is often difficult to establish by radiograph percussion or other means. In most cases, the patient complains of discomfort or may or may not be able to locate the affected tooth. In the early stage, when hairline fracture is present and before separation of the fragments is evident, no radiographic changes are visible either in the tooth or in the adjacent bone. At times, asking the patient to chew on a tooth sleuth, cotton applicator or rubber polishing wheel helps in identifying the tooth. The most frequent radiographic presentation observed in vertical root fractures, especially with maxillary premolars and the mesial roots of mandibular molars, is the presence of a hollow or J-shaped appearance of bone loss. When a longitudinal fracture of a root occurs, the prognosis for that root is usually hopeless. Endodontically treated teeth have to be extracted if they cannot be restored. So, extraction of such teeth is the recommended treatment of choice. That's all for this video. To recap, 
Endodontic emergencies are defined as pain or swelling caused by inflammation or infection of the pulp or periradicular tissues necessitating an emergency visit to the dentist for immediate treatment. Endodontic emergencies are broadly classified as occurring before treatment, during treatment and after treatment. Emergencies occurring before treatment are further classified into emergencies presenting with pain or swelling and traumatic injuries. Endodontic emergencies which occur during treatment are hot tooth and flare-up. The emergencies that can occur after treatment are post-obturation pain and vertical root fracture. A hot tooth basically means a tooth which is difficult to numb using local anesthesia. This phenomenon is most commonly seen in the mandibular first molar. Endodontic flare-ups are defined as an acute exacerbation of an asymptomatic pulp or periapical pathosis after the initiation or continuation of the root canal treatment. After completion of a root canal treatment, patients usually complain of pain especially on biting and chewing. This is considered to be normal and it can persist up to 5 days post-obturation. If the pain is severe or persists for longer than 5 days, then the operator should reassess the treatment. When a longitudinal fracture of a root occurs, the prognosis for that root is usually hopeless. Endodontically treated teeth have to be extracted if they cannot be restored. Hence, extraction of such teeth is the recommended treatment of choice.